Welcome to our topic in Pride Terms, Introduction, under the sale of good act, in Pride Terms involve warranty and condition, and unless otherwise thought of. Condition, these are terms of greater importance, which breach of the term amount to total repudiation of the contract. So if a condition is breached, it can amount to total repudiation of the contract, warranties, these are terms of less importance in a contract of sale of good, which breach of it does not amount to total repudiation, but rather amount to monetary compensation for the damage. If you breach it, if the warranty is breached, it does not amount to total repudiation of the contract. So it will only amount to monetary compensation for the damage, but not total repudiation of the contract. Note that. Reverse of condition, it is where the buyer may want to treat the breach of contract as breach of warranty, therefore claiming damage rather than repudiating the contract in totality. So the buyer may prefer or become lenient to the seller instead of repudiating the whole of the cont of contract due to breach of condition. He may treat the breach of condition as breach of warranty, which is allowed by the contract of sale. And after, breach, after treating the breach of condition as breach of warranty, it becomes with the waiver of condition, and therefore claiming for damage rather than repudiating the contract in totality. Here are some of the implied warranties. One of them is quite possession. So the buyer in possession of good is entitled to enjoy his good peace free without any unnecessary disturbance from the seller. If his right is violated, he can sue the seller free from charges and encumbrances. This means that goods sold to the buyer should not be of benefit to another third party unless communicated to him when forming the contract. So if it is com communicating, to, communicating to him when forming the contract that a certain good would be of certain benefit to another third party, so he cannot sue the, sue the seller for the encumbrances. In private condition, one of them involves right to sale. The seller is entitled to sell good in both the agreement to sale and in the actual sale. He has the right to pass the good. If good turns out to be defective or passed in bad title, then the buyer can sue the seller and repudiate the contract altogether. For instance, in Lollard v. Divar case, the printful bought a car from defendant and used it for four months before discovering that the car never belonged to the defendant. The defendant had to return the car to the real owner. It was held that the defendant was in breach of above implied condition and the printful was entitled to recover the price he had paid for the total failure of consideration. Another implied condition is said by description. If the sale of good if the sale of good take place by description, the description or the sample create an implied condition that the good should correspond with the with those good described. Failure to that it can lead to the contract repudiated. For instance, in Varese vs sweep case, where the print fool sold a ripping machine to defendant, which the defendant had not seen. The machine was described to be new in the previous year and as having been used to clear out 50 to 60 acres. On delivery, the machine was discovered to be much older and did not correspond with the one in the description. It was taken that the defendant was not liable to pay for the machine at it, as it did not meet the description given by Printful. Therefore, the defendant could not pay any money to the Printfuls, since the good he described the defendant did, did not correspond to the good delivered to the defendant. To the, to the defendant. Condition to maturability. The condition is provided under section 6, subsection, subsection B of the Sale of Good Act, which provides that good which are sold by the seller should be of maturable quality and fitness. It does not apply where the seller ought to have discovered the defect of good while examining 
but if the buyer could not identify the defect in good, he can sue for he can sue the seller and compare him for liability. This is where the se the buyer is given a chance by the seller to assess the good which he want to buy, but if there is a defect which the buyer could identify while assessing the good, he cannot compare the seller for the liability since that defect was open to him and he could identify it. But if he could not identify it, then the seller is liable for the defect. For instance, in Morelli v. Finch and Gibbon, where Morelli bought a bottle of ginger wine from the defendant shop, when he was trying to open the bottle, the neck came out and injured his heart. It was said that the print who was entitled to damage as the bottle was not of much at quality. Condition to fitness is another implied condition. It is where the buyer makes known to the seller the purpose he is buying a certain good and the buyer recommends that good to the buyer, hence creating an implied condition that the good will meet the purpose of the buyer. Failure to which the buyer can sue the seller for the liability. This is where the buyer makes known to seller where he is where he is buying a certain commodity, and the buyer uh, recommend to him about a certain good which will meet his expectation. If it turns out not to meet his or her expectation, he can sue the seller for not selling for failing to sell him good which fits the, spe the specification which he had given him. For instance, in Pre versus Cast case, where Pre asked for a bottle or asked for a hot water bottle and inquired whether it will, will withstand boiling water. The defendant told him that it would withstand hot water but not boiling water. The bottle busted and caused injury to the white fur of the print food. It was said that the, the bottle was not fit for the purpose which it was acquired and the seller was liable to pay the damage. So the seller was liable for the damage since he was selling the bottle, the buyer had already told him why he is buying that bottle to his third boiling water, but the buyer by negligent by negligence accepted to sell the bottle to the buyer, knowing well that it could not withstand boiling water. So he was liable to pay for the damage caused to the printful wife. Sale by sample. It is a sale is another implied condition. It is a sale where a seller gets into an implied condition with the buyer by offering a buyer a sample of good corresponding to which he wants to purchase, excluded from the, the um, to purchase, excluded from the seller if the buyer could identify the good or the liability is excluded from the seller if the buyer could identify the good the defect in good while trying to examine the sample for instance in donet versus finas in donet and finas versus boas and sons the print fool went to the defendant warehouse to purchase some group the glue was stored in barrels, bills, and every facility was offered to the defendant to satisfy to, to satisfy himself of the quality. He merely looked to the bills, but did not open any of them. On delivery, the glue turned out to be of wrong kind. It was therefore held that there was no breach breach of implied condition because the print who was given a chance to examine the good. This is where the print who went to a certain warehouse to uh, the defendant warehouse to purchase some group. He was given a chance to examine the sample and examine, and, and examine the goods in the barrel, but ignorant or negligently, he did not examine the goods in the barrel and involved uh, had an utmost good faith to the defendant. Therefore, after the group were delivered, was not of the quality which he wanted and sued the defendant. 
therefore it came it the coat the key the coat arrive at a decision that since the plaintiff was given a chance to assess the good the defendant was not triable and there was no breach of implied condition for those group being delivered to the plaintiff therefore some of the implied condition in saved by the sample the year the samples should correspond with the good in the bark the other implied condition in saved by the sample the goods in bark should not contain any defect so should be relatable to the good to the sample good the buyer should be accorded a reasonable opportunity to compare the sample and the good in bag so the buyer should be given an opportunity to compare that sample and the good which will be delivered in bag so i hope that one that makes the head of our marks the head of our topic thank you for watching kindly remember to subscribe and comment about the video and watch the video which you are recently uploading thank you